Let's clear up some confusion, yeah? Let's do that, okay? No, and Dr. Kenberry will say it first thing. We're not gonna look at your calorie intake. We don't care about your calories. Calories don't matter when you're on a carnivore diet. They just don't. I'm sorry you're so butthurt about that. I'm sorry you can't wrap your brain around an easier way to lose weight. That's why I'm here to inform people that you don't have to What's up guys, Derek, my plate more dates. Com. Today we're going to be talking about the only diet you can actually eat without having to count calories because you actually can eat whatever you want and calories in, calories out just doesn't fucking matter. I hate these kind of videos, dude. You know, the cal in you know, the fucking semantic argument about the calories model and I actually did a little segment uh, with Andrew Huberman recently on our podcast about the influence of the quality of calories on the energy expenditure and whatnot. But anyways, the reason I'm doing this video is because there is this individual who I'm being tagged in, you know, different tweets and direct messages and shit. She is basically like, unfortunately, TikTok will blow up certain videos regardless of, I don't know, just like how controversial it is, how whatever, like they don't seem to care if it has quality information or fucking anything. They'll just blow it up. And um, this individual is picking up some steam. Her username is Carnivore Coach Payton. So you can kind of tell what to expect when you're getting into her channel here. Carbs are your en- <laughs> I can't even fucking talk. Carbs are your enemy. Carnivore is not for the weak. So obviously a hardcore carnivore diet zealot. And she has sort of, uh, you know, put some of her progress you know, transformation before and afters on her page and kind of elaborated on how beneficial this diet model is, why carbs are fucking terrible for you, why you should be following this diet model, why it's the best, etc. And you start to get down the unfortunate side tangent of falling into the camp of this is the way you need to do it and there's no other alternative that is superior to this. When in reality, there are holes in it that a lot of these individuals are completely unaware of and frankly have only come to the surface relatively recently as areas that ultimately boil down to circling back to a balanced diet model almost at the end of the day, which is interesting how this always seems to be the fucking answer to pretty much any kind of ridiculous, you know, pigeonholed fucking diet model. Like you have to eat only like this or only like this. You end up with some sort of aberration in physiologic functions and hormone production that cause you to defer back to what happens to be overall a more balanced diet model to actually make things not get fucked up. So she mentions here that calories don't matter. Obviously, you know, she knows she's trying to be controversial here. She's uh, even has a bit of a fucking attitude while she's talking about it, which is, uh, you know, she's passionate. I understand she had a good transformation on the carnivore diet, which we will get into shortly. But here she says why calories don't matter. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's clear up some confusion, yeah? Let's do that, okay? No, and Dr. Kenberry will say it first thing. We're not gonna look at your calorie intake. We don't care about your calories. Calories don't matter when you're on a carnivore diet. They just don't. I'm sorry you're so butthurt about that. I'm sorry you can't wrap your brain around an easier way to lose weight. That's why I'm here, to inform people that you- Okay, so caption is sorry, not sorry, get over it. Hashtag cut it out, hashtag carnivore, hashtag weight loss, hashtag zero carbs. So basically outlining how the micronutrient dense meat that she's eating trumps anything else and having zero carbs whilst concurrently only eating high quality meat puts you in a situation whereby you do not need to count calories to lose weight. So I'll let her continue here. You don't have to go kill yourself in the gym. You don't have to restrict what you're eating. You don't have to watch every freaking calorie you put in your body. Eat meat. It okay, so obviously even <laughs> off the bat, that's kind of paradoxical when you're saying don't restrict what you're eating when you're literally restricting yourself to only one type of fucking food for the rest of your life. But continue. It heals. It defends. It reverses type 2 diabetes. It reverses PCOS. It increases your energy. It, it, it suppresses your appetite. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm so sorry that you are so angry inside that somebody has a different idea than you. 
So, you know, pretty bold statement. Don't need to count calories. Obviously, we've heard it many times at this point. Now, why would you not need to count calories on a carnivore diet? Well, ultimately, if you're in keto, like obviously aberrations in blood sugar and insulin dumps and shit are not going to be as problematic. And you'll probably find if you're on a keto adapted diet that you do not have nearly as bad of cravings if you are essentially in a state of sugar addiction via your brain. However, and you know, obviously with carnivore, you know, red meat, high quality micronutrient dense meat, um, it's quite, you know, satiating. It tastes fucking good. You know, a lot of people are quite satisfied with it, but you know, at the end of the day, can you overeat on a carnivore diet? Yeah, you fucking can. Are you going to lose a bunch of water weight off the bat too because you have no carbs in your system? Yeah. Is it going to give you the illusion that you're losing weight? You know, a lot of people would probably assume so and they'd think, wow, this shit's working real quick as well as your gut actually adjusting to it and you like shitting your fucking brains out for the first few weeks. That and the water loss from the loss of carbohydrate storage is going to be quite significant in your apparent weight loss off the bat. But above and beyond that, yeah, it is actually quite good at you know, adhering to a reasonable calorie intake because you have no fucking cravings realistically once you're keto adapted, but it does not mean the calories in calories out doesn't matter. Now, I don't even want to get into the fucking discussion of calories in calories out, you know, calories doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. Like we all fucking know at the end of the day, energy in versus energy out, energy expenditure, how much you're fucking eating, you know, what the quality of the food you're eating is going to impact you know, hormone production, physiologic processes that are going to dictate how much energy you expend and the quality of the calories matters and ultimately calories in, calories out, law of thermodynamics, you can't fucking dispute it. If you are eating too much meat, you are not going to lose weight still. However, could it be harder to fucking overeat only meat when you're keto adapted than if you are eating donuts all day and shit? Yeah, obviously. However, it doesn't mean you don't need to fucking count calories if you're trying to lose weight. You know, you might not need to. Maybe you're so fucking satiated that even situation to count calories is completely unnecessary because it's sort of self-fulfilling via the fact that you're just not hungry enough to eat in the surplus. You know, that's certainly possible and is likely the reasoning behind our statement. However, ultimately we all know the law of thermodynamics is fucking undisputed. No one's going to talk about that. I think on this channel and think that, you know, what she's saying makes any logical sense other than the obvious, even if you think calories in calories out doesn't matter, you're just fucking eating less than you're expending at the end of the day if you're losing weight. But the problem here is her bold claims about carbs are your enemy. Carnivore diets, the fucking shit. It reverses type two diabetes. It does all this stuff, like quite a few bold claims in this TikTok, And it's kind of interesting because it sort of harks back to some of the old stances of some of the individuals she looks up to and highly regards and some of their shortcomings, which I've exposed in previous videos. And they have since realized their errors, which we will get to shortly. So here's her transformation, by the way, quite impressive weight loss. Not that I needed to come on here and address this. Because you have obviously your attitude's fucking shit, but anyways, your own issues, right? For judging me without even knowing me, yeah. Um, but I'll just okay. Yeah, it's great that you lost weight. You know, ultimately, this is what this is the first comment in the fucking thing. Girl, you cutting out carbs puts you in a deficit. Therefore, you are losing weight. LMAO. Um, yeah, people who actually have a well-balanced diet and do weight loss right look better and show actual progress pics, not you flexing in a mirror. I marked the milestone of fitting into a Nike women's large after being able to barely squeeze into a 2X. I'm sorry, you're a miserable person. So, you know, obviously your comment section is, uh, you know, some people, a lot of people, frankly, are just obviously not going to like her attitude towards the situation and her illogical approach to the obvious law of thermodynamics. But anyways, as far as the carbs are the enemy, you got to only eat meat. Carnivore diet's the way to go. It solves fucking everything. She mentions in here specifically why you would listen to her and where the information derives from and what the high level of credentials are behind the individuals who are proponents of this carbs are the devil shit. And I'll let her tell you exactly why. All professionals. Dr. Paul. So she's replying to this girl has no idea what she's talking about and has been proven wrong by so many professionals. So this is her rebuttal to that. Dr. Paul Saladino, Dr. Kim. So her first mention, her highest fucking tier guy, Paul Saladino, continue. And Barry 
excellent, extremely informative, Dr. Sean Baker, Lisa Weidman, Jay Wrigley, Michael Eads, Anthony J, Jordan Peterson, Paul Mason, Gary Fedke, Paul Mabry, and David Unwin are all professionals that I have listened to that are absolutely extraordinary and extremely informative. All doctors, not TikTok nutritionists and dietitians with a couple hundred thousand followers. Nope, none of those. Um, yeah, they're excellent. So if you want to do research, there you go. Dude, <laughs> the attitude is fucking unmatched. So just because these are doctors, are they infallible? Have they made, you know, errors in their ways before and gone to correct them? Well, let's talk about Paul Saladino. I, f I like the guy, to be honest, but some of these individuals are pretty dead set in their ways and are pretty opposed to any kind of scrutiny and or feedback, but he has actually shown, unlike some of the other carnivore diet zealots, that he is actually adaptable and willing to go back and update his views, even if it goes completely in the opposition of something that he was a huge proponent of and was part of the foundational infrastructure of his previous arguments, which frankly, I found pretty, you know, impressive because a lot of people would not do that because it's fucking embarrassing when you're a high level professional and you've literally written a book about something and you have to go back and correct yourself. So again, she is basing her opinions off of some like old fucking Paul Saladino content as well as all of these carnivore diet zealots who think carbs are the enemy. You only got to eat high quality nutritious red meat. That's all you got to fucking do. I made a video over a year and a half ago now and I've talked about this many times even prior to that as well about free testosterone levels getting destroyed on keto and carnivore diets. And this is something I've noticed through longitudinal data from many individuals, especially highly regarded guys in the space, Ben Greenfield, Paul Saladino, this fucking guy, I think it was like carnivore Kurt, some of these individuals that are very forthcoming about putting out their blood work and whatnot and were prominent like proponents of keto diet or carnivore diet. And they would you know, constantly show their blood levels of disproportionately crashed free test levels with sky high SHBGs, binding protein levels that are equivalent to that of a fucking woman. And it would constantly go overlooked and they would say dumb shit like, oh, it's like fucking your sensitivity to tests like goes up so you don't need higher free tests and like blah, blah, blah. When in reality, the reality was that their long-term keto diets and carnivore diets were actually slowly butt fucking them. Now I'm not saying that there's no place for these kind of diet models or that they cannot be implemented in a sustainable way, but there has to be some level of centered kind of balanced approach taken to them that is considerate of some of these extra factors if you want to optimize health and performance, in my opinion. And it has actually spurred the emergence of certain threads on even Reddit. Like there was this posted in the keto subreddit, a fucking 2.6 million member subreddit more plates, more dates. In a recent video, it says that carbs are necessary for healthy levels of free testosterone. How much of this is true? And in here, there's people being like, nope, fuck this guy. He swears. You know, why would you believe this guy? Blah, blah, blah. And like, <laughs> it's there, dude. It's not hard to understand that there is an inverse relationship between SHBG and carbohydrate intake when you look at even growth factor production and different kind of interactions with carbohydrate ingestion and different um, insulogenic cascades and whatnot it starts to make a bit more sense why this is happening in these individuals and what may be a more viable approach. And we actually see the adaptable and intelligent individuals who are not, you know, completely fucking dead set in their ways to the point of putting out incorrect information, going back and correcting themselves and putting out what they believe to be representative of the highest quality information, even if it goes against their previous like hardcore cemented stat stances that they put out in the past. So I highly recommend you watch this video. If you want to see how substantial it is, by the way, you have guys with high total T levels, like good fucking testosterone production, but like borderline hypogonadal or literal hypogonadal free test levels as a result of ridiculous binding protein production and seemingly not understanding why. And then, you know, I kind of elaborate why, you know, carbohydrate ingestion may be, you know, or just a balanced diet approach would be prudent for individuals who are looking to optimize health and performance. And more recently, Paul Saladino has come out with a controversial thoughts video, the dangers of long-term ketogenic diets, where he essentially shits on the original stance and actual current stance of a lot of carnivore diet zealots. And it's kind of interesting because he is like the premier face of the carnivore diet at this point, essentially. And he essentially is stomping on the idea 
of something that is like the forefront like infrastructure of a lot of these people's like entire belief systems and basically saying that it is now something he's doing to optimize his health and performance to implement carbohydrates as well as certain things like fruit and honey which it's like that's fucking mind-blowing for a carnivore diet zealot to be like oh my god our fucking leader is betraying us and some of them actually act like that they don't want to be even consider this as a possibility because they're so close-minded so i'll let you listen to him and he sort of reflects what i've been talking about for a while now my reverse t3 was 15 and looking at my other labs you can see my fsh and my lh were okay but so here he's going through his old lab work when he was like pure carnivore. But my free testosterone was 4.64, which is a little on the low side. 4.64, a little on the low side. You're literally a fucking 80 year old hypogonadal man right now. Like that's what your fucking free test is. And my total testosterone was 562, kind of on the low side. And then 562 didn't range it's reasonable there's sufficient lighting cell stimulation going on there's not a you know deficiency of luteinizing hormone your pituitary seems to be working fine so why is it that your free test is fucking hypogonadal bro he knows and he's gonna tell you why i want to point out my sex hormone binding globulin of 113 so my shbg was quite high throughout all of the time that i was in ketosis Look at this shit, 123 on fucking, in 2019, and 113 here. Ruthless, dude, ruthless. So that was when I was fully carnivorous. Now, if you compare that to labs one year later, in July of 2020, you can see my sex hormone binding globulin with the inclusion of carbohydrates is now 59. <laughs> 59, so it's essentially half of what it was. I'll talk about that a little bit, but I do think that there is good clinical and research evidence that ketogenic diets long-term elevate SHBG, which leads to a lower free testosterone. You'll see that my total testosterone is now 742 or was in July of 2020. Um, it remains there 700 to 800. And my free testosterone was 64 in July of 2020. All of these improved significantly with inclusion of carbohydrates in my diet. I will also point out for those of you who are interested that my fasting insulin was three when I was zero carb, quote unquote, as a carnivore and remained less than three, essentially undetectable, uh, less than three micro IU per ml with the inclusion of significant amounts of honey in my diet for many months when checked in July of 2020. My C peptide was actually lower with carbohydrates. So Lest anyone believe that the inclusion of these carbohydrates in my diet was making me insulin resistant, uh, there's a lot of literature and my own labs arguing strongly against that notion. I'll show you the thyroid stuff from the July labs. TSH is down significantly. That is thyroid stimulating hormone. I'll comment on that. T4 free is about the same. Uh, T3 free was unfortunately not measured in the other labs, but is now within the reference range and is fine. Now you remember like there's so many things in the carnivore diet where they're like oh you know like thyroid hormone sensitivity goes up and like yo your androgen receptor sensitivity is higher so it's fine to have fucking hypogonadal free tests like all of these justifications for what in reality at the end of the day is just a subpar approach to a balanced fucking diet i'm not saying it doesn't have applications by the way it has a lot of amazing anecdotes especially in the autoimmune you know subsection of individuals very very fucking useful for some people however for optimal health and performance and a balanced approach to high functioning human level fucking performance if that was even a grammatically correct sentence for somebody who's trying to function as at a high level and have you know maximum energy you know maximum vitality uh, maximum muscle building potential fucking sex drive psychological benefits etc a balanced approach leads to a better hormone profile and better outcomes. And subjectively, with the inclusion of carbohydrates, like I said, I felt much better in terms of body temperature as an indication of overall basal metabolic rate, perhaps. Now, for those who are not aware of thyroid hormone physiology, TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. And when TSH is higher, it means that the brain, specifically the pituitary gland, is having to work harder 
to stimulate the thyroid to make the thyroid hormones T4 and T3 subsequently that it needs to fuel metabolism in the human body. So higher TSH generally means uh, more work uh, or more of a press down on the gas pedal coming from the brain to the thyroid gland. So what we see is that with the inclusion of carbohydrates, my brain has to work less hard to get my thyroid to make the thyroid hormones that it needs. And uh, both subjectively and objectively, the thyroid hormone status appears to be improved with the inclusion of carbohydrates in my diet. So broad spectrum, higher level endocrine values in all aspects, not just from a free tea aspect, there are other aspects and impacts of long-term keto dieting as well that should be considered. And people should approach this shit with an open mind as opposed to getting very, very, I know, tribal about their approach to fucking ingesting nutrients. Like at the end of the day, we're all trying to learn and educate ourselves. And when you get close-minded and fucking religious about what you're ingesting, um, well, I guess maybe religious isn't the right word because there is, you know, actual religious outlines about what you should or shouldn't eat and whatnot. That is a totally different subject. But when I mean like you get way too, I don't know, like uh, dead set in your ways to a point that you're so close minded to any kind of emerging literature or things that might prove your stance is wrong. Like it doesn't reflect well on your credibility or your ability to, you know, educate about this kind of stuff to begin with. Like I. I cringe at the thought of somebody putting something like carnivore coach in their name because it's like you've you've basically just bottlenecked the shit out of yourself and pigeonholed yourself to this one kind of thing and it's going to be very hard to get out of that lane that you've subjected yourself to because ultimately you're sort of questioning your own like intelligence essentially when you have dead set said this is the way to go and then down the line you have to you know backtrack and be like you know what everything I said was 100% correct is actually factually wrong. Like it's it's a lot harder to go back and try and correct something. And it takes a lot like bigger of a person to really fucking do that than it does to just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna disregard everything and just, you know, keep pushing with my stance regardless of what comes out and regardless of how logical it may sound. To me, it doesn't sound fucking logical. I'm not gonna consider it whatsoever. So be careful when you come across shit like this. Ultimately, it is uh, something you need to educate yourself about and continue to stay on top of the literature because even people she regards as experts in the field are changing their stances quite significantly from what they had just a few years ago. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality oversight from doctors who actually understand this kind of stuff, endocrinology, as well as what kind of biomarkers and diagnostics you should be getting and how to interpret them and how to create an individualized protocol that is based on your own needs, regardless if it involves pharmacology or not, or just natural interventions via lifestyle manipulation, diet, sleep hygiene changes, etc. We do it all return key and I highly recommend you check it out. It's something I wish I had in my corner when I was younger rather than, you know, going on my fucking hands and knees to act, ask for a basic lipid profile from a doctor who is just going to judge me and be condescending and a fucking dickhead to me in person. So this is something that I think is highly valuable and is critical to have in your corner to maximize your um, quality of life. Uh, moving forward and stay on top of your health. So check it out as well as Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas designed myself from scratch, as well as my recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance whilst being mindful of things like micronutrient density, thyroid health, electrolyte balance, etc. This diet makes it idiot proof to hitting your micronutrients concurrently with your macros and um, also being mindful of gut health and things that are commonly overlooked by cookie cutter influencer diets sold on Instagram and shit. Um, and this diet does, you know, leverage the high quality, you know, red meat that is, you know, so sought after in the carnivore diet. However, it is a balanced approach rather than a pigeonholed myopic approach. So I definitely recommend you check it out as well as anything else I'm associated with. It is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.